Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live for Dirt Dog Sports. I mean, we got another good one. Uh, before we start doing all this, this is your friend, your amigo of always, Arno Santiago, and we are going to be talking about baseball. We have a picture today that is going to show you a lot of tips. We're going to be able to see a few of your videos. I mean, it's the, the same thing we've been doing for the last three months, but before we start the whole thing, I want to say happy Father's Day to everybody. We're celebrating this happy uh, Father's Day weekend, so we're enjoying it. Uh, so everybody at Dirt Dog, everybody out there that is listening, watching this video, uh, remember, happy Father's Day. Feliz Día a los Padres, a mi padre, a mi papá en Puerto Rico, y a todos los padres que conozco. Uh, that's in Spanish. You guys know, I don't always mix the Spanish and all that, just to get you going, guys. But uh, we want to say... Uh, uh, Thank you to everybody that has been following all the guidelines, all the safety guidelines that we've been doing indoor. Uh, parents, the kids, you guys have been amazing. Uh, coaches, because it's not easy. Uh, one coach sometimes have to do a lot of stuff. Things move a little smooth, so, a little slow sometimes, but then it gets better. Uh, just get, just, just bear with it. Bear, bear with us, and we're gonna get you guys out there next week. Supposed to start practicing outside. Make sure you check with your coach. Always follow the guidelines. Follow the guidelines. We're going to have some guidelines set up just for you guys and the coaches. So please just make sure you check your email. Uh, if you don't check the email, make sure you go to mom and dad. Make sure that and let them know that they, they check the email. OK, so uh, let's start today. I mean, we got something pretty guys for you. So, Alex, what we got? Doesn't move. Good change up to a lot of people. There's a little number to Escobar. There's one, and that's a double play to win the year. Here comes, hit it. But those guys behind me make the plays here. Nice going. It. Thanks, Ed. And strike three. Swing and a miss. That ball went in the dirt, so McCann has to fling 339. Part of this sellout crowd silenced here to Dobbs. Struck him out. Bottom fell out of that pit. The fourth. Ivan yes here in the eighth back-to-back -back strikeout since the home run. I'd have to be on the list. And Vasquez gets him. The 0 2 Got him swinging. Strikes out the side. 2-2. Another strikeout. 500. Another strikeout. 2. Got him swinging. Other people want to guess. There's another strikeout. And there it was. Caught. Even more different. Yeah. Another strikeout. Strikeout number nine. These starts don't mean much. They don't have much backing. Got a score. Roche gets down the bunt. Two away. One, two. Got him looking. Just a little target. Got him swinging. And here comes number eight. And that's strike three pull. Fooled by the change up there in the inning. Struck him out. First with two out. And there's strike three called. Fastball dropped the opener here last night. Strike three to Drew. Team with him. Katze out of there on strikes. 3 2. Fastball. This should be a double play. It is. Getting over. 1 2 pitch. Struck him out. A little bend in that one. And Check swing and a miss by Drew. And he struck him out on a fast swing and a miss. A one-two. And he struck him out. And he struck him out. He spins around and strikes out. And Doug Melvin didn't appreciate it as Lee strikes out. Lined up the one-two pitch, swung on and missed. Two pitch coming up, and it is swung on and missed. And Manny Ramirez is swung on and missed. Strike two pitch, breaking ball, got him looking.
And got him. Played 4 and 06. Climbed the ladder, struck him out. Still bunting the 02, and he got him. Got him. Resign. Bobby just blew him away. Got him to chase that, a strikeout. All right. There's that breaking pitch. Well, here is a 14-year Major League career pitcher from Puerto Rico, Javier Vasquez. It's our uh, VIP guest of today. So how you doing, Javier? I'm good, Arnold. How are you? We're doing good. It, it, it's nice to have you back. Uh, we want to remind everybody, we try it. If, I think it might have been a month ago or something. But Arnold Santiago's uh, uh, phone wasn't doing that good. We got it here. You see, I promise you guys, we're going to get you back. We got Javier Basket back. Uh, Javier, nice, nice for you to be with us. Welcome to Dirt Dog Sports uh, Facebook Live. Uh, it's an honor for us, for all you guys watching uh, this. Uh, Javi is the winningest uh, pitcher from Puerto Rico in the big league in the history of the game. So that's something that, that you know, we, we, we want you guys to know because uh, I know Alex put that video together there. We almost saw like 5,000 strikeouts. For Harry, but for Harry, even though you know that he usually tells people he doesn't feel like a strikeout pitcher when he was there, but he's yeah. one of the few guys in major league history to strike out over 2,500 batters. So it was in a, a pretty nice career for Javier. Uh, Javi, just you know, just want to start. Uh, how you got yourself in baseball? I mean, were you a, a baseball all your life? Did you did any other sports when you were growing up? How was it before you signed professional? Um. Uh, thank you for having me, Arnold. First of all, I want to say thanks to Alex for putting up the <laughs> the, the good videos and not the bad, <laughs> bad highlights. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I started uh, I started playing baseball very young. Um, ever since I, I remember I had a, a glove and a ball and a bat in my hand. Um, my father uh, loves baseball um, and... Uh, he uh, he he taught me everything. He taught me um, the beginning of of the game, obviously. Um, and I started I started practicing when I was like three years old, and then at five I went to like a, like a camp um, in Puerto Rico in Ponce with uh, with. It's gonna sound really old, <laughs> you. But we already sound old. <laughs> it was it was with Pancho Coimbra, Juan Gilbe, and Miguel Navarro. Wow! So wow! And I mean, I the only guy, the only guy you were missing was probably my dad. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was five years old though. Your your dad's much younger though than, <laughs> than those guys. But um, but yeah, that's how I started, and uh, you know, I continued playing uh in in Ponce Little League and 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 youth baseball until until I signed professional at seventeen. I mean, uh. For everybody to know, uh, Javi is from the south side of the island. I would say an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes from San Juan. Uh, and I'm letting you guys know because you guys from there, though, we went, when when you guys went with me, we went to the Carolina San Juan area. But when you guys went with Alex, some of your kids from there, though, you guys actually went to Juan Arias and played in Juan Arias. So Juan Arias is very, very, very close. Uh, yeah. Well, if I tell my dad, it's he'll probably going to be like, you know, Juan Aria is, you know, the, the door for Ponte, you know, that's what he'll say. <laughs> but <laughs> if I tell who, if I tell Javi, he's probably going to say something else. But uh, I just want I'll you guys to know. Be... <laughs> I'll probably say it's uh, the second town of Ponce or something. The second town of Ponce. <laughs> all right, all right. Whenever you guys just see my dad, talk about Ponce and Juan Aria. But you know Go what? You know, you know what? I I, I, uh, I married a girl from Juan Aria and I played. Amateur baseball in Juan Adia, so I can't I can't talk you about can't it. Say too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't say too much about that. Uh, but uh, you were you were in the you know like uh, in an area that was always you know pretty much hot. You were able to be out there mm -hmm. more than probably everybody else around uh, Puerto Rico, just because the other side we get we get some rain, but not in the south side. Uh, so you were able to work with your dad. That's one of the persons that you say you know got you into baseball. How important was uh, the family, not just that, you know, but everybody, mm -hmm. the whole family. How how important was when you were trying wow. to reach your goal as a professional? Well, wow, that sounded. Yeah, Does it's it it's, ra it's raining here, and it, and it just <laughs> we just got lightning big time. I swear. We, we, we got I the like, oh my for god, you guys. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, family, uh, you know, very important in 
you know, when I growing up and, uh, you know, they were key in, in my development in baseball, both my 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 dad and my mom and my brother also who, who signed professionally. He never got to the big leagues, but he played three years with with Tampa. Um, but uh, yeah, there were, you know, my father, when he couldn't take me because he was with my brother, then my mom used to take me to the games. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my my dad, he he, he was the one who always you know, right after he, he, he got home from work, he would always, I would tell him, hey, dad, let's go practice. And he would always say, say yes. He was never tired to to help me out and, and, and to go practice with me. So so I owe him, you know, very much uh, to him and, and my mom. And growing up, before, of course, before we start talking like 14, 15 years old, how much did you enjoy the game that you were playing? I mean, how much you were playing baseball? I enjoy. We got a lot of kids that we always tell them when they're nine, 10, 11, they get mad at me because they strike out. I'll be like, come on, just laugh, have fun or whatever. Yeah. But they get a little upset because, of course, they take the game. You know, you know how, you know, now you could get on YouTube, you could get on the uh, social media and see, <laughs> see a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, all those videos are always good. Like I always tell them, those videos are always good. Nobody strikes out there. Nobody does exactly. that. I mean, they're all great. But the real thing is, baseball is not an easy sport. And I think it's something that kids need to understand that as soon as they start playing ball, I mean, you will fail at least. Yes. I mean, even if, even if you fail seven times out of ten, you're still a mm -hmm. Hall of Famer if you're a hitter. So it's going to happen. But I want you to tell them how important it is, even for the parents too and the coaches, how important it is to make sure that the kid it's having fun before he really gets serious with it. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, even even after you get serious with it, if you don't have fun and you don't love the game, you should not play. I I, I sincerely, oh, I always say that to the kids. Um, I think baseball or any other sport that you want to play and you enjoy playing should be fun. First thing, um, even when even when you're a professional and you're in the big leagues, it should be fun. If it's not fun and you're not enjoying it then you better you better you better quit because it's not you know you shouldn't do anything that, that you're not having fun with but but baseball you you know you have to enjoy it like i said um and 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 you you said a great point uh arnold you know uh, baseball is, is a failure sport um you're gonna fail more than you ha that you uh succeed um so uh so the 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 sooner you learn that you're gonna there's gonna be games that you're gonna strike out three or four times but the next game you might get three or four hits and that's you you can erase that um and uh and w when you're professional you learn how to how to how to how do i say that when uh, when when you when you fail in an at bat you learn how to forget about it immediately oh, yeah. and take it to the field and and yeah. do your thing on the field if you're if you're playing defense you have to forget about it because if not, you're going to take your failures to the field and then you're not going to be good on the field. You're going to be thinking yeah. about the at bat that you just had. Um, so the sooner you forget a bad at bat, the, the better you're going to be. You're gonna be. Um, so, so I always try to, to, to teach positive, think positive all the time. Um, and at bat doesn't matter. Um, so keep working and, and, and keep thinking positive. Yeah, that's one of the things that I always tell the kids. I mean, you have to have short memory. If you don't have short memory, yeah. you're going to have a tough time. I mean, and it's just your baseball. I mean, in life, literally in life, yeah. you have to have a short memory because if not, you're not going to be able to do the next thing that you have to do, maybe in an hour or so. But a game, I mean, we could see Javi there pitching. In a game, I mean, it, it's a tough game. So you want to be able to be able to help your team somehow. Javi just mm -hmm. told you guys, if you don't have a good at bat, don't worry about it. Just go in the field. You might make the saving play that is going to save the game. Exactly. So things could Definitely. happen, but you can't get down. Same thing, of course, we're going to tell the parents and the coaches. You know, you have to, you know, let the kid go, uh, point, point things out to them after the game, way after the game, when the kid is probably eating ice cream or eating a pizza. Then you talk about a little about something that happened that you want to tell him that uh javi i want to tell the kids that, and i want to hear from you how important it is you no matter how age you are no matter how old you are i know when you're younger 10 11 12 years old uh you only play especially at that age here you play the weekends you don't play the whole the whole week but i always tell the kids i mean it, routine is important you no matter how you do it 
but there has to be a routine. I mean, if the game is at nine o'clock, you cannot show up at eight thirty and think that you're gonna be ready for a game, even if it's just a game, a ten year old game, yeah. because you're not yeah. gonna be able to be yourself. You're not gonna be a hundred percent. So how important it is a routine, and when do you learn? There, man. Yeah, routine is very important. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I learned it later in my career um, when I started to get more seriously in sports. Um, I had nobody, you know, my father um, obviously told me the game and, and, and told me to enjoy it. Um, and he, we practiced a lot together growing up. Um, but about a routine, I didn't, I didn't learn it until I was probably like 15 years old. Um, but I told my son before he was 15 years old to have a routine <laughs> and to stretch and, and, and all the things that you do before the game to get ready. Um, and also during the week, because like you said, baseball is a really tough sport. If if you only practice once a week and then you're going to play once a week, um, you know, it, it, you, 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 you're you probably going to struggle a little bit. So especially once you get to a certain age, the, the older you get, the more you need to practice because pitching becomes better, hitting becomes better. Fielding becomes better. The game, just everybody is better when, when they're older and they, they keep playing. So, uh, so yeah, it, the quicker you learn a routine, um, and when you're older, um, start doing, you know, exercises. But when you're young, you can, you can, you know, you can t hit against the net, um, uh, throw. If you don't have a throwing <laughs> partner, you're throwing against the net also, against the wall. Sorry, moms and dads, but the, but that's the, walls, <laughs> the walls are going to... <laughs> you know, I, I broke a, I broke a few lamps in my house uh, when I was growing up. Uh, so, uh, so that's part of uh, of growing up with a kid who who loves baseball and who loves sports. Uh, the same with my son. He's he's broken a few uh, <laughs> a few lamps also in my house. So. Of course, inside we're happy, of course, but at the moment we're like, hey, you can't do that, man. What are you thinking? But inside, <laughs> you feel good, feel good. But I mean, nowadays, I mean, we we grew up uh, in a in an era that it was tough to find a net. Right now, yeah. you can just walk out and find a sports shop and buy a net. Mm -hmm. At least, even if it's a cheap one, you don't matter. I mean, you there's things you could do. There you go. You, you go, go to eBay, Amazon, Amazon, whatever. <laughs> You're going to get it. So, so uh, I always tell the kids, I mean, you guys are always all over Fortnite, uh, Xbox, PS5, mm -hmm. and all that. You're all over that, and you make mom and dad spend money because you work a lot outside to make sure mom and dad uh, help you to buy a game. Hey, buy a little net. I mean, buy a tea with a net. Yeah. You're going to find a way to get a routine going because, I mean, like Javi said, you cannot expect yourself to be ready to go if you practice Tuesday. Let's say, for example, what we do at Dirk, though, we practice Tuesday at 7, then we, we, we go and play in the weekend. I mean, you are, you know, behind the eight ball if you wait mm -hmm. for just that one hour to get you ready for that game. I mean, and that's one thing that we all learned when we were growing up. My dad used to tell me that. But it is true, like Javi said, you know, he already told his song about routine because you need a routine, kids uh, and girls. You need a routine. Yep. The routine is going to get you a long way in life, not just uh, in sports, but it's going to get you a long way in life. Before tomorrow gets here, get a routine going, get an idea of what you're going to be doing, uh, and things going to be a lot easier. Well, Javi, the only bad thing that probably everybody watch here is that you with a yankee uniform of course uh <laughs> we don't we don't we don't talk about the yankees that well here in their dog in matter just a but uh you you're one of us you want you're part of the family so we we were able to deal with that uh how was how how you describe your 14 year career in the big league i mean for you like if you're sitting down now saying you know okay i'm out of baseball for a while uh, and you're one of the guys you you retire early uh, it's not like other guys that the game push you away. No, you actually, you told yourself when to do it, how you want to do it, and you did it. So how you describe your whole 14-year career in just for you, just as a, as, a, as a person that accomplished something? Yeah, um, I mean, it was it was a blessing, truly a blessing from, from the Lord um, who uh, permitted that I that I played that long and, and had a good career. Um, so to me, to me, is is I see it as a blessing, man. I, I was able to, to to pitch at a high level, at the highest level for 14 years, um, and I still I, I I go back to when I was a kid with a dream to play in the big leagues, and and after you know after I retire, I was like you know wow, I actually <laughs> accomplished and and what I what I 
what I wanted to. I mean, I, I ever since I was a kid, I wanted to play in the big leagues. I didn't know how hard it was when you were a kid, <laughs> uh, but I found I found out really quick how hard it was to to play to be professional and then to play in the big leagues and and to actually to stay in the big leagues is even harder um, with all the competition that you have. So uh, so truly blessed. That's that's the the way I I see it. I was truly blessed and 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 that I could pitch for that long and with no injuries and and, and everything so and i and i think that's that's one of the things that I, i i always like when i talk to you it's the no injury part i mean i mean of course we can't control injury or no that but at least it makes us feel that what we've been doing for that long what we do in the off season what we do all the time it it, it does it, it's the, we're doing it the right way you know we gave it the hundred percent we made sure about it Uh, because I want to tell all the kids before the season starts. That's the idea of every ball player. You don't want to get hurt. Yeah. You want to make sure that you do things right. But, of course, like I always tell the kids, uh, you see a lot of things in YouTube, and, you know, you think because that guy's jumping from the roof and landing <laughs> with one leg and he's doing it, you know, that's the right way to do it. But now, you know, you, you make sure, you know, you know what you're doing, you find a way and find what is helpful for you. Because I was a guy, Javi, I, I couldn't do a lot of weight. I just couldn't. I, I just know why. I mean, they got mad at me in, in Cleveland because I didn't did weight that much, but I just couldn't. Every time I did a lot of weight, I couldn't even throw the ball. I felt weird in the batter's box. That's just, you know, it's you you know yourself. Then I know some of the guys right now, like some of you kids know Luke Voigt with the Yankees. It looks like if he's not getting a lot of weight, he's not in the game. So he's always pumping up. You find a way, whatever works for you, you just make sure mm -hmm. you do it right. Uh, and it's going to help you. Alex, uh, Let me see that video again with uh, with Beltre there with Javi pitching because I want to I want to talk with the kids and Javi. Javi, this isn't a bad that you don't throw a fastball at all. It's only three pitches to to Adrian Beltre. He, he he took the first one. Of course, he usually takes the pitch. That's sometimes how he did it. But that one he didn't look good at all. And then you came back. It looked a lot a lot slower than <laughs> the the second one you threw. Um, and I want you to talk to me about this because I, I tell the kids sometimes, sometimes, I mean, and especially with 15, 16, 17 year old, they already know how to throw a curve and all that. Mm -hmm. I always tell them if a batter shows you he cannot hit a pitch, why showing something else? I mean, just, you yeah. know, stick with what you got. And they always look at me weird because like, oh, coach, nobody could throw three pitches the same way. I say, why can't you throw the same pitch three times in a row? If he's not hitting it, what's the point of trying to do something else? I mean, Uh, and I want you to tell the kids, I mean, that that's, you know, if it's, that's a good idea or not, because the a hitter should be able to tell you what's going on sometime in the first pitch. Yeah, definitely. That's a great point. Um, I think, uh, you know, you hit it, you know, right in the nail. I mean, um, when, when, uh, I've, I've, I always pitch that way too. If, uh, I, I, I like to, 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 this. and in that about with Beltre, we've had, such a long history i faced him in the minors in the majors so so i've we've had history um but uh you know i always the same with the fastball i, I like to pitch with my fastball and uh and if i'm throwing my fastball and and a guy swings and he's late at the fastball i'm gonna throw it again um because like you said if he's showing me that he's late on my fastball i'm not gonna throw him a slider or a breaking ball and, and get his bat speed going um so uh and the same with the breaking balls when you're when you know in the big leagues if if i know a guy is not hitting my my curveball or my slider or whatever or change up i could i could throw it again and back it up and, and throw it two three times in a row until he proves to me that he's or he or he lays off or he's or he swings at, and and he's he's on it then i i can show you something else but mm -hmm. uh you know pitching is about changing speeds changing the hitter's rhythm and timing um And uh, that's what I try to do. And and that about with Beltre, for example, I started off with a with a slider, um, and then I threw a, a breaking ball, a curveball, um, mm -hmm. and then I threw a slower breaking ball than the than the uh, slower curveball than the one before. <laughs> you threw like so a slurpee. All, yeah, it's, it's all about changing speeds. Um, I know some guys. Um, I I started doing that with my changeup and my curveball. Um, and those are field pitches. Um. I could throw my change up, let's say 82, but then I can also throw a change of 76 or 75 or, and take off uh, that pitch. 
And if the guy's looking for a change about 82 and you still throw a change up, but you take off six miles per hour less, you're yeah. still going to get him out in front. So, uh, so I learned how to do that after, after a few years in the big leagues. I actually learned it watching, uh, I had Levan Hernandez as my teammate. Okay. Uh, Levan was great changing speeds with his off speed stuff. Um, so I learned that from him. And that's good. I mean, cause I mean, the way you did that, I bet. And the way Adrian la laugh at the end, it kind of tells you that <laughs> definitely I was looking for the curveball at the end, but not yeah. that speed. Yeah, I he mean, was looking so. for it. you could see it. He waited and waited and waited, but it was slower, so he couldn't wait. There you, you go, know, the slider. Yep. And I think this curveball might have been, let me see how fast it was. 66. It was like 60. Whoa, there you go. 65. And, and he's kind of like, more. look at him. He's like, I'm going to look for that one. I'm going. Yep. <laughs> and you were like, okay, you're going to look for it, but he's not going to. <laughs> yeah, if you see the swing, he looks for it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, it's even slower than the one before. So. Look at that. He's like, oh, my God, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I, 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 I brought that point on because, of, you know. That's one of the few times I got Beltre out, by the way. He, hey, he, we, <laughs> we, we got Alex back there, man. You know, <laughs> Alex got you yeah. going, though. <laughs> you know, I see nothing here that you're not supposed to see, guys. So good, don't worry good, about Alex. it. Alex, good job. Good job, buddy. <laughs> but it, it's good that we show this, and it was nice that we find that video. Because I keep telling the kids, I work with the pitchers too, and I, and, you know, I tell them, you know, you see something, not with the young kids, of course, because the young kids, I want them to throw the fastball as much as you can, build up your arm the best way you can, and, and let it go. Uh, and now that we're talking about that, before we go into the videos, uh, and this is more for coaches and, and parents and all that, when do you think is the best time for a kid to try working with the curveball, at least? Because we know the changes, you know, it's something you could work, but the curveball, that is the one that, it's getting some parents uh, in the wrong foot thinking maybe we could start here. And I know, I know uh, as, as a coach and all that, Little League World Series doesn't help that much. Because no, we see right. the Little League World Series and their parents you go like, aren't you sure there. we can throw a curve with talk? And they're throwing it. Most of those are uh, elite players at that age. I mean, they put a team together from around, I don't know how many states, and they put a team together just to go there. So, of course, they have kids there that... They're 12, but they're almost 13. Correct. So you're going to be able to see something. But for you, for you, you have a kid. If he's going to pitch, when do you think is the best way for him to throw a curveball or start working with a curveball? Well, it's, it's, first of all, it's, it's tough for me to, uh, <clears throat> to, to tell somebody a, 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 an exact age to when <clears throat> to start throwing a curveball because all the kids develop differently. You know, you see some 13-year-old kids that are – develop already you can see that they're they're strong and they're they're already uh, way developed uh well developed uh and then you see another other 13 year old kids that they look like they're nine yeah. so so those those guys like that shouldn't shouldn't be messing with with breaking balls there because they're still growing and and you know a, a lot of things can happen when when your growth plates are, are you know they're still open and you still got some growing to do so uh so it all depends. It all depends. I, I, I tell I tell dads and, and, and moms and dads that the after the fastball, after you, you develop your fastball and you throw your fastball and command it, I think the next pitch you should learn is a changeup. Uh yeah. change up is, is one of the best pitch after for me, after the fastball, the best the best pitch in baseball is a it's a good changeup. Yeah. Um so so I think you should develop the change up first, um, after the fastball and then you can start throwing your curveball, but later on, when once you're you're stronger and you're developed and you have no injuries and you have good arm motion too, because, and mechanics. Yeah. Because if you don't have a good arm motion and you don't have good mechanics, then a lot of things can, a lot of bad things can happen. There you go. That's and there's a changer. No matter when you throw it, I mean, your changer will do a lot of things. I mean, and if you're a hitter, pitch to play shortstop, play other position, you're gonna get the idea how a changer could really, really get anybody out. It doesn't have to be just uh, little leaguers or nothing. You could see a major league guy there. Uh, strike. I think that was your 2,500 strikeout, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was, Lucas. It? Yeah, it okay, was. okay. Yeah, so so. Uh, so it was it was nice. Oh, yeah, Alex. You see, Alex got you, man. Even getting a hit. Look at that. I mean, ah, you can't... <laughs> are you paying Alex or something? What's that? Yeah. What's... <laughs> I, he, uh, over the mail. He's going to get a check in the mail. Look at that, my man. But no, I mean, uh, uh, you were here too growing up. I mean, you play other position. How important it is uh, to play other position and even other sports 
to get you going when you're starting up in sports? I think it develops uh, good athleticism, you know, playing other sports. I play basketball, volleyball in Puerto Rico, uh, play a little tennis. I, I play whatever. I played every sport at school. Um, and, uh, and I think it, it just develops over athleticism. And, and when you're young, um, you should play a lot of sports, especially when you're up in Massachusetts. You have, um, yeah. you know, you have uh, lacrosse and you have soccer. And, and basketball, so so football also mm -hmm. they were there. So so whatever you can play depends the season. Uh, it's good. It's good to develop. Then you, you're gonna get to a certain age um, when when you are gonna find one sport that you're better at and and stick yeah. with that. But early in, in early in life, when you're a kid, just just play everything, man. It's it's there you go. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, man. There you go. I mean, it's like I tell my 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 girl Larissa. I always tell her. To try to do all the stuff so she learned how to play softball she learned how to do all the stuff mm -hmm. and now she's dancing all oh, he's dancing and dancing yeah. and dancing but i could tell that the athletic thing that she learned playing a little sports at the beginning helped her with their footwork and there it goes that's heavy in in winterly with the leones de ponce and that, that one is with the caguas criollos uh heavy playing the winter league too uh, it's something that most of the puerto ricans uh we do uh, we usually play when we start a career in the minor leagues, and then when you make it to the big league, then uh, you find your spots when you need to go and, and fine tune something, or you uh, play a few a few games there, and that's what Javi used to do. But I mean, it was it was it was an amazing career uh, for Javi in Puerto Rico. Uh, I mean, and we're we're truly truly best that we have him here for a little bit. So let's go with the videos, Javi. We're gonna have some kids. And you know, just point out a few things that you see while what they're throwing. I think we got like maybe five or six videos. So, Alex, whenever you're ready, my man. Hi, my name is Charles Mallet. I play on Chris Divers 11 U team in Dirt Dog Sports in Canton, Massachusetts. This is my four seam fastball. This is my two seam fastball. And this is my changeup. Nice. Here we go. Very nice. One, one thing, one one thing I see right away is um, he's uh, he's using his legs okay, but he can use him a lot better. He's got a good arm motion. Um, okay. But his back, his back leg, he should push off um his back leg forward they they call it like like ride the mound ride the mound means uh your your right foot should should try to when you push off the mm -hmm. rubber your right foot should should uh should get away from the rubber a little bit when that's that means you're really using your legs and it's mm -hmm. tough because sometimes sometimes at this age you know you see he's a young kid 11 but he he looks really young he's still got mm -hmm. a lot of developing to do uh, it's 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 tough for them because they still doesn't ha don't have the strength in their legs, um, so sometimes that's a little tough. But overall, he's got good mechanics. Um, and uh, but try to I I would consider try to use his his right leg more, his his push off leg more towards the okay okay. And that plate. and that's kind of like uh, when you do those drills that we do, guys. You see pictures when we do sometimes. Their dog, uh, Javi knows about those. The ones that you raise your front foot up. And kind of stay there for like a second or so and then get the idea of staying back and push yeah, uh but correct. but it's, it's true what, what javi said because sometimes we go to mounts here well not just here everywhere at that age and the mount is flat and it kind of makes the kids oh, yeah. feel like they're throwing in the in a marquesina in the garage but it's <laughs> not and so of course we need to keep working on that so charles that's the tip from javi we're going to start working on that again make sure we stay we stay back there so you could push off and it's a lot easier for your arm, like Javi says. So yeah, yeah, it, it'll it'll help his arm for sure. He he's gonna probably throw harder once he uses his legs more. Um, but it'll help his arm because it's less stress on the arm. There you go, there you go. Who we got, Alex? My name's Chase, and I play for the Ten U Dirt Dogs. I'm gonna show you the three pitches I like: two seam, four seam. And the change up. I'm gonna do the change up. There you go, Chase. You let us know. <laughs> All right. So, so Chase, 
um, needs to work on his balance more, staying, staying, staying uh, behind the rubber um, a little longer, to, so he can can use his legs okay. more properly. Um, but his balance, is, when you see he raises his legs, he kind of goes okay. quick to home, so he doesn't get to to uh, to, uh, to the like to the balance point. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So look at look at him here when he raises his leg, he kind of goes really quick. Yeah, he yeah. He's not he's not getting into his into his leg into the rubber. Um, so stay a little longer. What they call stay a little longer over the rubber. Um, okay. So you can okay. have all the power to go to home plate. They, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, Chase. I mean, yeah, you're going, you're going very quick, very quick, and it doesn't let your arm or no, pretty much your body get get in control before you explode to go home. All right, that's yeah. true. And then he's then he's uh, when 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 you see guys um, that don't stay back in the long in the rubber or or try to go too quick to the mound, mm -hmm. they're not consistent with the arm slot. Sometimes the arm gets there, but sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Because because you're not consistent staying behind the rubber and staying nice and, and, and tall and nice and balanced and get everything together, your body use it to go to home plate. And then guys, if you're a coach, it, it helps to see if you see somebody like Chase, uh art art that you'll probably get, get a little tired quicker than anybody else just because they're you know they're they're fighting without knowing. They're fighting with their with the slam the hand slot, like Javi's saying. So we always keep an eye on that because, of course, you know, we want to make sure that the kids uh, are doing it right. But sometimes as a coach, uh, we need to, you know, keep an eye on that and find out those little pointers. And Javi just said it there. So that was perfect. Another, Chase, work on another, that. Another thing that that uh, I was going to tell uh, him is when when he throws the the changeup, when you have a changeup grip, I noticed he used Chase used a, a two seam changeup grip. Okay. Um, so so it, you use a two seam. You can use a two seam changeup grip or a four seam changeup grip. It all depends what pitch you throw the most in the game. For, for example, okay. for example, if you throw more your four seam, then you should throw a four seam changeup. If you throw a two seam or more, then you should throw a two seam changeup. This is a little bit more advanced, but because when you get older and you want to pitch, then hitters are, you know, they can see the rotation when you get yeah. to high school. Um, so the quicker, you, I'm not saying that the hitters are going to see that now, but the quicker mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. start learning and you start doing it, it's yeah. going to be easier for you when you get older. Yeah, your brain get used to that, and then your exactly. your, your, your home so, mechanic goes through with that. That's perfect. So, so Chase, we're going to work on that. I'm a, I'm a big believer on. You know, there's some things that are more advanced to some kids, but there's some some other things that are still advanced. But if they keep hearing and hearing it and hearing it, they're yeah. gonna get to a certain age and they're gonna get it. They're gonna yeah. just, oh, I remember that. I, now I know what he was talking about, or I know how that feels. So, so I think you should you should always tell the kids the proper way to do it and the right things to do it. They might not get it immediately, but in three or four years they might get it. Yeah, that's true. Because I started hitting a curveball when I was 13 or 14. So it took my dad like <laughs> eight years before Arnold was able to hit a curveball. <laughs> All right, Alex. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dean Madden. I play for Chris Thurs. I love you, Dear Dog Seam. This is my two seam. This is my four seam. This is my changeup. And this is my fork ball. You you don't need a catcher, Javi. No, you don't. <laughs> wow, he's got he's got pretty good. Put it put it again. Dale, dale. Hi, my name is Dean Madden. I play for Chris Thurs. I love you, dear dog team. This is my two team. This is my four team. This is my changeup. This is my fork ball. Oh my god, please, yeah. please don't throw the fork ball. <laughs> that, I was, I knew Javi, I knew Javi was ready to say it. <laughs> All right, so, so when, when he, he's got, he's got, he uses pretty good his legs, his arms pretty good. Um, the only thing I notice is when he throws the ball at the end, mm. he kind of stays a little tall. He, instead of finishing and staying low, he kind of, 
throws it and kind of wants to get up quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so so you, you, you want when you when you release the ball, you want to have full extension and finish over your if you're a right hand over your left knee. Um, that's going to give you full extension. And once when you when you release the ball and you stand up sooner or, or even your arm, you, you, you might, you know, you can get sore maybe on the on the back of the arm. But always when you finish, always think about releasing over your and releasing and finishing over your left leg um, and releasing and staying down. That's going to that's going to help you accelerate and and finish with with good posture and everything. And I'm going to tell you one thing, now that I have you saying that, I mean, I, I went to college with a, with a pitcher scholarship. So I pitched my first year there, and that was my main pitch, the, the fork ball. Uh, and I ran into that trouble that Javi is just saying right now. Sometimes I would whip myself back when I was throwing the fastball because I felt like the fastball might, it would come out quicker. So I kind of like surprised myself a little without knowing. But it was because every time I threw the fork ball, I would make sure I stay way down with it. So it was kind of like like I was slowing down with the fork ball. And then I was when I felt the fastball, I would go back like that. I was like, whoa, what's going on? But tell yeah. Dean why, why is a little worry? at that age to be throwing the the fork ball well the the fork ball first of all it, it puts it puts a lot of pressure on your elbow um just because you have to grip first of all you have to open your your arm and that right there opening your you can feel it when you open when you open your arm you can feel like that you can this get tight the forearm gets tighter but also um, at the end, when you throw a fork ball, at the end, you always have to extend a little bit and do mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And that motion there also puts a lot of pressure on your elbow. It's like the slider. That's why like a fork ball, slider, those pitches like that, you should throw those pitches when you're developed, when your muscles mm -hmm. are developed, your joints are, are fully developed. Um, because they, those, those two, especially slider and fork ball, put a lot of strain in your elbow. There you go. There you go, Dean. So, I mean... I know you probably like throwing it, but just 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 work work on the on the on the other change of, you know, the that, change that the change whatever all that, but don't don't use the four ball for now. We're gonna work on that, we're gonna make sure. Uh and it's gonna be a lot helpful for your arm just to develop, just to develop and get that elbow going. And then we you know we'll talk about it when you get to high school or something if you want to use the four ball again. All right, Alex. Hi, I'm Drew Bowen. I'm on Dirt Dogs 9U team, and I love pitching, and these are my grips. This is my fastball. And this is my changeup, and that's it. I see. The, the other thing is, um, if you can pause that one second. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, the, 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 the other thing is, when, when you're when you're young, when you're in, you know, those ages, nine, 10, 11, I, I believe that every kid should, should throw four seams instead of two seams. Um, I think the two seam is a more advanced pitch. Um, and kids at that age are not going to have, they're not going to have the, 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 the finger, the lengths on the fingers to be able to throw a proper two seamer. So I think just to, to show them the proper, way to grip a, a ball is on a, a four seam. You know, if you're playing mm -hmm. outfield, you want to throw a four seam a grip. If you're playing in the infield, you want to throw a four seam grip. If you're catching, you want to throw a four seam grip. And if you're pitching, you should, at that age, you should throw four seam uh, pitches because it's the correct way to, to throw the fastball. The fastball is going to be true with true mm -hmm. rotation. It's not going to move. And, and throwing a two seam grip when you're nine, 10, 11, it's not going to do mm -hmm. anything. Um, because you're too young, you're not gonna have, like I said, the length on your fingers to really, you know, throw it. Um, the two seam, you should all. I think most of the pitchers grab grab the ball two seam with the uh, with the fingers together, not separate. Also, mm -hmm. um, so it's just, you know, I like yeah. teaching the kids to throw the proper four seam grip because that's that's how they should throw the ball when they play other positions. Yeah, because at um, that at that age, like you say, I mean, their fingers will never get together to be able to really. Yeah get on that seam and make a move. I mean, I know it looks exactly. nice on TV. It's pretty nice, <laughs> but it's not going to happen uh, no, until no. you develop those fingers and you get a better... I, I mean, sometimes at that age, even the ball feels like it's a softball, but that's just yeah. how it is. So you want to make sure that you get that um, the fingers going. So four seam. Uh, go ahead, Alex. Run the... Hi, I'm Alex Rodriguez. I'm on Dirt Dogs 9U team, and I love pitching, and these are my grips. 
Hi, I'm Drew Bowen. I'm on Dirt Dogs and 9U team, and I love fishing, and these are my grips. This is my fastball. Forcing grip, Drew, from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we go. Write it down. And that's it. Okay, so 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 same thing as the other kid. You wanna you wanna have balance. You wanna when you're mm -hmm. pitching, you wanna raise your leg properly. Um, when you just throw the home plate without raising your leg, you don't have any power with it. So you just, basically you, he's just using his arm to throw the ball mm -hmm, to home mm -hmm. plate. There's no legs involved, no balance, um, nothing. So yeah. so that that puts a ton of pressure in in his uh in his in his throwing arm um i would uh to me i would work besides before pitching i would work yeah. on his throwing mechanics first how to throw correctly um how to use your front side uh, how to stay closed um how to use your legs how to use your arm and then pitch because there's some kids out there at nine eight nine ten mm -hmm. that still don't have the proper you know throwing yeah. mechanics now i'm not talking about even pitching i'm just throwing Throwing, just throwing the ball so just throwing the ball learn how to properly throw the ball um how, how to use your legs how to use your your front side where your arm should be your release point and, you and then um you know concentrate on uh, on start pitching after you develop your uh, correct a uh, correct throwing motion a uh, correct mechanics well there you go my man so keep working on that we're gonna keep working on that you are starting a dirt dog so once mm -hmm. you know we once we get you there we're gonna work on that but it's true what Javi said. That's another point. Uh, parents and for coaching, for uh, both of yeah. them that are the adults uh, with the kids, uh, at that age, you make sure that if you see something, you know, let's not put him on the mound yet. Let's make Correct. sure he knows how to do it, at least Correct. to throw the ball, how to throw the ball. And I think, Javi, we could get that kid, I don't know, put him in the, in the left field line or right field line and kind of throw a little farther away just to get the idea of just get mm -hmm. your arm going, get your arm going, don't worry about how far you throw it or not, just throw it. No, just no, throw no. it. Yeah, just, and let just it, learn let how it to throw it. There you go. There you yeah. go. All right, Alex. Eddie's going to take dirt dogs 12 people out. Two seam fastball, four seam fastball, change up. All right, so he he has the same the same he he gets to actually he gets behind the rubber pretty good. See the balance, he goes back. He he he's got good balance there. Um, more legs also um, towards home plate um, and finishing up. But his guy, I like I like his balance. I like the way he he brings his back. Uh, he stays back uh, on the rubber. And then he goes forward after he's gathered himself. So, so pretty good. Um, let me see here. Oh, I missed that one. Okay. I guess a little, a little three quarter the there side, almost. I yeah, saw, yeah, I yeah. But I it's good. It, it's good what you say. Yeah, it's good what you were saying. Yeah, it's more, more, more legs to push off the because he gets really, he gets back well. So that's the good thing. He gets back well. So now once you're back. Really push off your right leg, um, so you get more more uh, momentum towards home plate. Um, okay. And careful, careful with the arm angles at that age also, um, because you wanna you wanna you know release the ball at uh, at always try to be consistent when you're releasing the ball. It's not you know when you start changing arm angles, that's yeah. you know a lot of things bad things can happen as well with the with the arm. Um, yeah. The, and then, really, you know, as soon as you start getting a little worn out during the game, then your arm slot yeah, is going to get start, lower and right. lower, and it's yeah. going to hard to come up again, and it's going to hurt you the next week. Uh, that's true. So, Freddie, keep working on that. Uh, but good job, good job, my man. Good and job. always kudos to mom and dad and everybody that is going out a little bit for a few minutes to do this. This is pretty nice. So, Alex, what we got? Hi, I'm Quentin Lemieux. I play for Dirt Dog Sports. Ten U's, purple. Uh, here are my grips. This is my fastball. 
Horse and grip, buddy. <laughs> Wait, there you go. I gotta call it the heavy grip now. <laughs> always force seam. Always force seam. Trying to hit the I love it when kids throw on their own. There's oh, nobody there, just oh, them and that. Oh, it's the best. Thank you for saying that, my man. <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. They always. You know, I used to throw against the wall, against whatever I had, man. Yeah, I see Alex there laughing because he knows I broke a lot of mirrors in my house. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so, okay, when he raises his left leg, you see how he opens and goes and opens up mm -hmm, without, mm -hmm. staying, without staying bad. A lot of the kids really? at this age, okay. um, 9, 10, 11, you mm -hmm. know, when they they have they don't have balance yet you know they they don't know how to balance yet a lot of it is because they don't have uh strong legs yet but they can start working first on getting over the rubber and staying over the rubber with balance right. with, with power you know on a power position um because it's going to help you in the long run it's going to help you you know when when you're older when you know how to throw the ball properly um, yep 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 so the same thing nice. um with him the legs uh just use his, his legs better um uh, work work on his arm motion also it's a little long um yeah yeah but, uh, see now really, now kids you see don't get don't do you guys used to make me get mad at arnold because arnold always talk about let's do the one two three drill let's do the balance first let's do one yeah, two three and you guys go crazy oh coach i want to throw the ball no, yeah. because it's just it's gonna help you down the road, and you need your legs. You need your legs if you're gonna pitch. Even if you, I mean, uh, Javi, even if you're not thinking about pitching when you get older, but you want to have a good game when you get up there in the mouth. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just ba balance. It's gonna help you in every sport you play, every position. You need to be balanced. Um, hitting, um, throwing the ball, fielding. Yep. If you're gonna play basketball when you're guarding, you need to be balanced. I mean. Yeah, everything, yeah. everything. If you don't, you know, if you don't balance if, yourself in boxing, if, they're gonna kick you, man. They're gonna turn exactly, they're gonna go I mean, down. everything. <laughs> if you if you're playing football and you're playing defense or <laughs> offense and you're not balanced, they're gonna they're gonna run over they're, you. They're gonna run um, over so, you. Uh, so All every right, sport that... you play, balance is really important. I used to I used to I used to do a drill um <clears throat> that helped me and it was uh just just standing on, you know, like I, I used to, I raised my left leg like I was gonna throw. Mm -hmm. Uh, against the mirror and I was watching myself in the mirror and okay. I try to stay it's like an exercise kind of but it's also a drill and you try to stay see how long you can keep the balance position and with the right leg just yep. how, to see how long you can keep it um and I used to do that when I was there you go 15, don't, don't. 14, hey 15, guys so. I didn't I didn't talk to Javi before the interview or nothing okay don't think that I told <laughs> Javi he needs to say that because oh, I don't know really? he's all over. no it's just that we want you to, you know, we want to work with you. We want to get you going the right way. We we at least went through and we know it could help you the best. Then, you know, when you get older, like Javi said, you're already going to know yourself. You're going to know your mechanic. And then you just work in certain things and just keep going at it. But, but when you're starting, yeah, you need to, we need to listen, kids and girls too. We need to listen mm -hmm. because we want to make sure you don't get hurt. Okay, we got one more video, Alex. and I'm 11 years old and I'm a pitcher for the Dirt Dogs baseball team. My two seam fastball, I grip it like this. My four seam fastball, I grip like this. My cutter, I grip like this. Ooh. With a little bit of air in between Ooh, cutter. my hand and the ball. Ooh. <laughs> Way to go, Omar. <laughs> And then my curveball, I grip like this. And then when I throw it, I twist. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> that, there you go. Go. Stays behind the rubber, okay. Balance. All right. Oh, that, 
I mean, uh, that was uh, Omar, man. He got a lot of pitches there, man. That's yeah. oh, Omar. <laughs> you you gonna get a lot Careful. of people out like that. Careful with the cutter, also. The cutter <laughs> is similar to a slider, um, and I'm sure he, they don't know the, the you know what supposed to They're, properly what do and to, properly yeah, throw yeah. it. So you gotta be careful. You can he can use his push off leg also better. He stays behind the rod pretty well, um, and he can push off uh, a lot better. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, That's good, Omar. And I uh, saw and I, I, we saw in Omar at least. Kind of like that pause and that balance yeah we're going so home that, so so the balance it, it's a little you have to, it, it's you have to i prefer that than mm -hmm. to not have a balance at all mm -hmm. but also also you should have a little momentum so you shouldn't actually have like a stop and then go because then you're losing momentum also yeah so I when i when i mean balance is is that you you're you're balanced behind the rubber but you you're you're going at the same time you know it's mm -hmm. balanced yes. but going no no stop yeah because then when you stop is you stop in it's like hitting when you hit when you hit if you if you go back and you stop and then go go forward you have no momentum so you, your energy you lose energy and yeah. you use power you lose power so you want to have good balance which means stay over the rubber but also go you know don't yeah. stop the actual stop and then go you know that's why we don't see too many japanese staying in the big league for a long time pitching because yeah. you know they do a lot of stopping and go that's how they were yeah. raised that's how they do it so they don't want to change but it is true i mean once you get that balance and also when you do the balance like i told the kids happy you have to make sure you stay true with yourself you don't go back you yeah. don't twist to the side or go yeah. forward because then you're straight. really doing nothing yeah. you're pretty much just still using your arm pretty much so so that's pretty nice. Uh, we got all the videos done with the kids. Make sure, kids, I mean, you're going to be able to watch this again, rewind it, do whatever you have to do, play it back, write it down, what Javi is giving you for tips. Anything else, uh, Javi, before we go up, oh, this is uh, Daniel Soto from DT Sport News. Uh, we're going to send you this. This is an art that he does. Uh, Very nice. Uh, that he's from Puerto Rico, and he's, you know, he once he knew you were going to be here, he knows I need to do wow. something for Javi. So that's uh, Daniel Soto, the Sport News. That's awesome, man. That's very nice. It's beautiful. Se lo puedes decir en español si quieres, porque si no, esto no te va a entender. No, no, fíjate, está. Está brutal eso, ¿verdad? Super, super bonito, mano. So we're going to get it to you, my man. But anything else that you want to add for the kids? Uh, it, and it doesn't have to just be pitching. I mean, whatever you yeah. want to add to the kids, I mean, that is going to help them a lot, especially now. That with this pandemic, we know we're going to be going outside uh, mm -hmm. next week, but we still don't know what's going to happen in a couple of weeks. I mean, Massachusetts, no. you know how it is, my man. We only have maybe like three more months to be out there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, no, just man, you just when you, when you're playing, just enjoy it. Like I, like we talked earlier, uh, enjoy the game, enjoy being a kid because when you're grown up, you have a lot of things to worry about. Even <laughs> that's like I told my kids, man, enjoy it. Enjoy when you're a kid, enjoy the times um, and uh, have fun, man, have fun um, and uh, and work hard. When when you get to a certain age where, where you want something in life um, and it's not even about baseball, you know, whatever you want in life, you have to work hard at it um, and uh, to truly, uh, uh to do what you want to do you got to work hard and, and and go for it so it's like i, I tell the same to, to my kids whatever you want to do i uh, do it but do it 100 percent, and you have to love it you have to really love it to to continue doing it well before we go happy happy father's day Feliz Dia los Padres, because and we know we're, we're enjoying this weekend uh and it's going to be a long weekend for everybody you're going to be in the ballpark though so you're going to be doing a lot of yeah. <laughs> a lot I'm of going crazy in the field <laughs> Uh, Alex, uh, I think Alex wants to come in and then say uh, bye to you from in the name of our, our owner at Dirt Dog Sport, Don Connors, uh, to say something because he, he tried to be here with us uh, today, but he couldn't make it. He's there with his practice. So Alex has, has a message for you. Yes, uh, we want to say thank you to Javi uh, for <clears throat> taking the time. We want to excuse the boss because he's uh, he has softball and baseball practices and He's taking care of the facility now. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. I think it was awesome. Uh, uh, we really appreciate Javi all the time. And uh, it, it, I think it's going to be great for this kid 
They have been texting me since a long time. So now I'm not going to get any more Texas. <laughs> Oh, oh thanks yeah. thanks thanks for having me uh, it's my pleasure you know whenever uh i can help out let me know it's my pleasure all right um, Alex, so uh, we're ready to go here, man uh just to remind the parents check the website www.dirtdogsports.com for practice schedules tournament schedules updates and all that stuff uh if you don't receive an email from your coach just go to the website and that thing is being posted and updated every day so we hope to see you again the next time there you go. Happy Father's Day, Alex. Yep. Happy Father's Day to you too, guys. Happy, happy Father's Day to both of you guys. And yeah, to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.